Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Philadelphia Eagles. With that, let's get up to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. We're standing by for the call are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago where the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying, fly, Eagles, fly, as they get ready to match up with Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. The Indianapolis Colts coming off a loss to the Cincinnati Bengals week one as Andrew Luck brings them out here. Well, for Andrew Luck in that game, the thing that Colts fans were just happy about was to see him on the field. First regular season action, Charles, in 616 days. And they certainly put his shoulder to the test, didn't they? Threw it 53 times in his first game back after all that time off. 39 completions, 319 yards, and two touchdowns. And also had to handle the pressure that Cincinnati put on him with their really good defensive front. Colts led most of the way. And in the big play, Jack Doyle, the tight end, after a catch, ball was popped free and returned for a touchdown. First carry for the rookie, it's Jordan Wilkins. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Offensive starters. Jack Doyle has to be one of the most unheralded players in the NFL. I remember when he came out of Western Kentucky, most thought he'd be the number two, number three tight end on any team he played on. Instead, how about last year? 80 catches, second only to Travis Kelsey of Kansas City, named to his first Pro Bowl, and I expect continued excellent play from him. Excellent route runner and a very good blocker as well. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Give the tackle that time to Rodney McLeod. Defense here for Philadelphia. It's a group that looked good in week one, holding Atlanta to 12 points. That's not easy to do. The pass rush still in full effect. Remember, Vinnie Curry went to Tampa Bay in the offseason. Bo Allen, who played very well at defensive tackle, he also went to Tampa Bay. But Brandon Graham is still around. Derek Barnett, last year's first-round rookie, is really stepping up. Chris Long, the Wiley veteran, is there. And they really love having Jordan Hicks back in middle linebacker. He's helping solidify that entire group. Throwing on third down. Long. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. How about this for an opening drive decision? You got fourth and short, just outside of field goal range in all likelihood. What do you do? I'm going for it. I've got to go get it right now. I want to establish a tone. It's early in the game. I want to let my offense know that I believe in them. And you know something else? I let my defense know I believe in them also by taking that gamble. If we don't get it, it's okay. You guys will cover for me. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by their third-year quarterback calling the shots under center. It'll be Carson Wentz. 
And what a season Carson Wentz was having in 2017 after a rookie season that was a little bit up and down, as you might expect. He was having an MVP caliber year. 33 touchdown passes at the time of his injury. Had his team at 11-2, riding high. Everyone thought that might be it for the Eagles. There goes their dream of winning a Super Bowl. Instead, Nick Foles comes in, team rallies, saves the day, and end up winning the Super Bowl anyway. But Carson Wentz had a big hand in getting him in that position. Now it's the boys he stayed alone, Jay Ajayi. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Against the Falcons, by the way, Jay Ajayi, 62 yards, two touchdowns in that opening night win. Well, that's why they went out and acquired him from Miami last year about midseason. He gives them a heck of a burst, can catch the ball out of the backfield, and he will be their full-time lead back in Philly. They'll use three, but when they want the big yards, the crucial yards, Jay Ajayi will be touching the football. take this one up to the 35-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down to pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Throwing on first is Wentz. Hurts over the middle. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That throw good for four. It's second down. And the tight end, Zach Ertz, is key in this offense as we get a look at the starters. Comes out of the factory known as Stanford, which keeps putting out tight ends. Zach Ertz, one of the better ones we've seen in recent years. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's across the 40, three extra yards to the 43. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. And let's go through the starting defense for Indianapolis. Expected to be a centerpiece of the Colts defense that has to improve, and that's Malik Hooker. Second-year safety out of Ohio State was limited to just seven games due to injuries in his rookie season. They love his range. They love his toughness. And they'll need every bit of that in an ever-improving AFC South that likes to throw the ball around. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And it push his way up to about the 44 here. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Back deep, Chester Rogers. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Only up to about the three-yard line. 
Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Good solid gain on first down. About what you'd expect from the big guy carrying the ball. Carry it's Wilkins. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Third and two, Lock. And that is incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets this away. Look at this. This is a good one. Now Sproles. Call that one an even 60 yards. 6-0. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. The defending champion Eagles coming back out here on offense. So, well, what was your takeaway from them on opening night? They got the 18-12 to 12 win. What do you see as you look at their schedule these next few weeks? Yeah, my first takeaway was that they found a way to win ugly on a night filled with emotion, right, where you unveil the Super Bowl banner and you know everyone's going to come at you with full emotion themselves. They weathered the storm and got a win. But with the schedule coming up, I see games that they should win. Tampa Bay, Indianapolis, and Tennessee – and that sets up a big home date with the Minnesota Vikings, a repeat of the NFC title game. On first down, Wentz. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Come on now, come on now, let's go. On play action, it's Wentz. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. And he's going to go out of bounds. He takes this one down shy of the 20. 23 yards on the play. Can't have enough good pass catching tight ends in the NFL. And the Eagles, they wanted to replenish their stock. They lost Trey Burton in the offseason. So they selected Dallas Goddard out of South Dakota State in the second round. And he is nothing but a big-time pass catcher. What a great story, because South Dakota State didn't offer him a scholarship out of high school. He walked on there. Yeah, so now Zach Ertz has a running mate at tight end. On first and ten, here's Wentz. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Marcus Hunt able to drop him for a loss of four. That's a good sign early for the Colts, who had just 25 sacks last season. People talk about putting an emphasis on an area of need. That's showing that the emphasis is paying off. Going ahead and getting to the quarterback early, 
When you only have 25 sacks in a season, that's not going to get you to the playoffs. That was 31st in the league. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. They run with a Johnny and able to work his way down to the 16. A sizable gain there, nine yards as they get it back to a third and five. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. From the gun, it's Wins. This is brought in by Gibson. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Working from the gun, Lance. And that's going to be caught for an Eagles touchdown. As his guys are in for six. And the Eagles have taken the early lead. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get over. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. Oh, this is blocked. And all the defense has it. But he doesn't get far. They're able to stop him. And after all that, the extra point attempt unsuccessful. I need your help on this one. We just saw an extra point blocked. Do you think the rain had anything to do with it getting blocked? Yeah, everything goes a little bit slower, but I'll tell you what, the snap and the hold, they look good. Yeah, and most of the time, I love when you bring that up about it getting slower. It's deliberate when it gets slower, right? Because you have to go through it a little bit more. You want to be just a little bit more careful catching the ball, putting it down, and giving him a chance to kick it. Elliott now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the six. <laughs> and he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Now a play fake, and it's locked. Try to lay one up deep. This is caught inside the 15. And he is taken down deep in Philadelphia territory. A huge play that time for the Colts. 65 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. The Colts with a first red zone opportunity of the ball game. They've got it first and goal at the seven. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. And they give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line. Because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. And he takes it in for a Colt score. Andrew Luck scoring on the two-yard keeper. And the Colts have tied things up. They can take the lead with the extra point. And maybe the defense caught a little by surprise there that he took off and got in? Yeah, I would think so, because if you're analyzing it from that side of the ball, you're thinking running back, fullback. <laughs> it takes you a while before you get to the quarterback. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. Footing always a concern, but the extra point's up and good. And they take the lead here at 7-6. to six. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll begin the drive with a giant. And it'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That's the receivers that spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. Four down, four down. There we go, back back. Here's a Jay. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. This is a Jai. It'll be a gain of three, and it also takes us to the end of the first quarter of play. One quarter down, 7-6 our score. And we're back to Philadelphia after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. Come on now. Let's go. 
Now they'll throw it. Lance completes it to Aguilar. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. It's a gain of four, and it gives him the first. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and ten. And he's completed all seven of his passes thus far. They fake the give. Now Wentz. A hit as he throws there incomplete. Well, partner, of all the great things that we saw in week one, unfortunately there was some bad, quite a few injuries, and the toughest one, Delaney Walker with that knee injury, he's gone for the year. Yeah, and that's really, really difficult for the Tennessee Titans to absorb because in a lot of ways, he's their number one target. He may play tight end, but he was the security blanket for Marcus Mariota. He'll be gone for the year. Greg Olson with the Carolina Panthers, he left the game in a walking boot but an injury of the same foot that was surgically repaired last year. And then there's some other injuries like Leonard Fournette with Jacksonville, Marquise Goodwin with San Francisco, Deshaun Jackson with Tampa Bay, Doug Baldwin with Seattle, and don't forget Keanu Neal mm. with the Atlanta Falcons. He got hurt, came back, left again. He's gone for the season as well with an ACL. Throwing his wins. Screen pass to Sproles. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends in the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. is in on the stop. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. Ajayi a first down and more. That one good for 16 and the drive will continue. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. 
Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The Eagles on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Wentz. And Jeffrey's got it. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll try and run it now with Sproles. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want to back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. On second and goal, Ajayi, the lone man in the backfield. They'll try to run with Ajayi. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that is going to set up third and goal. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense. Countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft. And able to really make a big time play for their defense. The Eagles on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. Delay of game. Offense. So that'll back them up five. Still third down. How crucial will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. Someone moved, flag is out. That's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud offense. crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming. Pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. A bad time for a false start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. Wins. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. He had a quick little spin move, but the door shut fast as he's dropped. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Now to try the Eagle field goal, Jake Elliott. Oh, 
And Elliott puts this one through. And they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. to seven. They had it first and goal. Three attempts, couldn't get it in, so they settle for three. Yeah, the field tends to shrink a little bit the closer you get to the goal line, doesn't it? It doesn't sound like it sounds a little counterintuitive, but you run out of space to run the deep route, so they can just sit on the shorter stuff if you're going to throw it. If you want to run it, it's just not as much space. They end up having to take three there. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And we take some time to spotlight T.Y. Hilton now. A chance maybe here for them to get him more involved. They're down here on the scoreboard, and he's been very quiet. And the silence has been deafening for his team. They don't need that at all. They need fireworks. They need explosive plays. They need him touching the football in any way possible. Maybe go to some jet sweeps. Anything to get him going. Yeah, something to get him the ball. We'll see if they can do it. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Ball start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's taken down. Back in his own seven. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. the sack oh they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town it's second and a country mile love finding a safety valve here that's complete so he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else a gain of four on the play and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long I think the best offenses love to give the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Third and long, it's locked. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. on the punt give him just one yard on the return and that will come the offense as they take over a chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi the passing game they've had more success there than the running game maybe something they game plan for how come they didn't tell us about it because <laughs> they wanted to keep it a secret <laughs> we did ask didn't we but I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10. Here's a handoff to a giant to begin the drive. Room to run inside the foot, and down right around the 37. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. 
And this is an example of breaking down a defense because a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They go play action here on first down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. They'll run it now out of the gun. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The Eagles on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and eight. To throw, it's Wentz. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. A lot of times people want to recreate the past, especially when the pass has been successful. When the Colts were good, they flew on defense. And Kamoko Ture out of Rutgers, he can do exactly that when he rushes the passer. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. They spot it on the midfield stripe. So it is a 60-yard attempt here. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. We focus our attention now on T.Y. Hilton as he gets ready to head back onto the field. Looking down at the stats here, realizing he has no catches. They targeted him twice, but no catches. So how do they get him more involved, Charles? You make sure he touches it on routes that he likes to run. Maybe even run a reverse or some type of a jet sweep so he gets his hands on the ball and get him active and involved in the game. You just try and find ways to get him going. And it doesn't have to be something that's big downfield. Maybe kind of like in basketball, just a shooter seeing the ball go through. You get him a rep, get him more comfortable. I agree with that totally. Maybe set that solid screen and give him an easy rep. And to this point, no catches. This is Wilkins. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime preview. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. Uh, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print it, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I'm Brandon Gaughan. From the gun on third down, Rock. And this is going to be incomplete. So he looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. 
Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Wentz now on first down. Burks has it left side. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Wentz going to throw. Jeffrey with a catch left side. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. An eagle first down. Wentz hooking up with Jeffrey. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Wentz now on first down. Drops it off to Ajayi. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Last stop. Last stop. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. the completed pass but for no gain stopped right at the line so it's second and ten wins to throw again now they set up the screen that's complete and that play will go nowhere losing yardage back near midfield at the 49 The Eagles on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is going to be third and 13. Play action. Now wins. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping, 
and drag it to make sure he gets it done. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and ten. And he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. Now Wentz again. And that incompletion breaks a string of five straight connections. And it's second down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. From the red zone now, wins. That ball's caught. Aguilar, right side. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Again, it's wins. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Eagles on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This is third and seven. From the gun, it's wins. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. And the kick by Elliott is good. And that will push the lead up to 12-7. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, Parker, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder... Are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful at getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach.
Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL and give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now wins. Jeffrey reels it in over the middle. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than a normal rush coming and he's taken down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit him with a screen soon. Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Wentz and company with some work to do after the sack. Working from the gun, Wentz. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And this kick will be touched down as they spot it inside the 45-yard line. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. They'll run it here with Wilkins. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. From 
the 50, it's long. Brought in over the middle by Graham. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. First target, first catch, and a first down. Walk on first down. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Get him, boy. Get him, boy. Wrong. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Give him three on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. Definitely too early to panic, but that is his fourth carry of the game, and collectively has a total 10 yards. So maybe there's no panic, but maybe some concern. Yeah, and maybe a little concern up front because they're not giving him any space right now. Delay of game, offense. And that'll set him back five. Still third down. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. Out of the gun. Block. Now a hit and run across the football. It's out. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on for the fifth time here today. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 20. Now wins. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. Got a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now a handoff working right. <laughs> Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run right, given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. They run again with a Johnny. And he's going to get to the 
the 31, enough for the first down. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Third two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Jamal sheared on the stop. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. The Eagles on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is going to be third and 13. Shotgun now for Lance. He's going to float this one deep right side. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And this ball is going to be touched down just shy of midfield. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. On first down, Love. Caught left side by Hilton. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball, because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it and it won't help him at contract time. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. They'll run with Mack. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Now Locke. Looking left side and he's got a man. It's Doyle. First time they've looked his way in this game, he comes through picking up the first. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, 
Tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. way forward here for a modest game. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Staying on the ground with Matt. They find some open field here. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. First down throw, Luck throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time, and that'll bring up second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much, maybe a yard down to the 23. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Throwing on third down, Locke. This is caught. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. T.Y. Hilton, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Colts are in for six. Well, that was not quite the Holy Roller, partner. That was San Diego, Oakland. You might remember that in 1978, right? Kenny Stabler, forward fumble. Dave Casper falls on the end zone. Oakland beats him on the last play of the game. But that was a live football. And what a nice job he did to fall in the end zone. And yes, indeed, folks, that's a touchdown. By the way, John Madden was coaching in that Holy Roller game, wasn't he? He certainly was, and he wanted to make sure that the call went his team's way, was out on the field, and was told, yes, it's a touchdown. Now get back on the sidelines. They'll run it with Mack, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A great play there, taking it in. And the Colts are in for six. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. And in the third quarter here, they were trying to put 
push that to a three-point game, but instead it'll stay at one. And I'm a big proponent of not chasing points or going for two too early. But in this case, I understand why. You know, if you kick an extra point, you're just up two, yeah. right? So a field goal still gets the other team ahead. So you go for two here and protect the field goal lead. They didn't get it done, though. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And out now come the Eagles. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start out on the ground with Sproles. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. Take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Clayton Gathers makes the stop. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. third quarter of action we'll return with more after this break you're watching the nfl on ea sports and welcome back we are in the city of brotherly love philadelphia this one's still anybody's ball game it's a one point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play to throw on second down. This is brought in by Gibson. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. on third down. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Jabal Shear. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five all the way down at the two-yard line. And the Colts coming out. 
now. From the end zone, Lop. He's going to let this one go deep. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down, Eric Ebron, the big tight end, his intended target. And it's second down. That was close to a big play, and just a little bit too far that he was led. He caught it, but couldn't stay in bounds, Charles. Hey, I'm not very good at these sort of things, but I have to believe the farther you are downfield, the less your margin for error throwing the ball, correct? Yeah. yeah, so they gave it a good effort there. Really tried, just couldn't complete it. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. Nigel Bradham brings him down. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell them to take care of the ball and try to move forward. And that is incomplete. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target. Incomplete. But the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Eagles will have great starting field position here as they take over. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And right now these guys are shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? think you're going to try and put one in the end zone. But here, the draw play just gets bottled up from the start, and he'll wind up losing yardage. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Here's Wentz to throw. 
And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Zach Ertz, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Eagles have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. So a big play for the Eagles now as they'll go for two. They're going to give it to Scholes. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offense has spent a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. Elliott now to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. From the gun, here's Luck. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. And they're moving on crossing routes. If you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Here's Mack. And he's brought down. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. He'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. on first down. That leads to a second and ten. A shotgun snap for Love. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. 
everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Play action here on first down. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Michael Bennett in there to get him for a loss of five. Bennett, of course, a big offseason pickup for the Eagles. And they love his versatility. He can play defensive end, defensive tackle in obvious pass situations. Nine and a half sacks last season in Seattle. And the smallest shoulder pads for a man his size we've ever seen. <laughs> a three-time pro bowler to boot. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Throwing his line. He's going to air one out. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. The Colts on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This will be third and 15. Here's Locke. And incomplete. The contact made the ball run free and brings up fourth down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi and we have seen a decline in the numbers where does the fault lie just him maybe the guys up front combination well as you and I both know it's almost always a collective deal but in this case I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident it blocked so well in the first half picked up on what the defense was doing I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed the Eagles in good position to start out as they come up first and ten. On play action, Wentz. This complete left side to Aguilar. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. They stay on the ground again it's Ajayi. And the penetration too strong. He won't make it back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Now the Colts offense. 
defense gets ready to head back on the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? They run with Wilkins. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Here's Luck now on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Grant, and he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. Give them a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation. And I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed. But the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Sproles, the return. Just a net of 34 there, following a punt of 44 yards. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. They were forced to punt last time. I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here. They can go ahead and do it. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. From midfield, here's Wentz. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Pass interference, defense. Well, this home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? They finally got one. Yes, they did. Come on now, all right. Come on now. Let's go. There we go. Here we go. 20. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain here down to the 22. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. A good run as he works his way for nine that time, and it'll leave him with a third and just a few inches. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this.
So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. The battle in the trenches never more important than right now. This is third and inches. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Elliott puts this one through. And that'll push the lead up to eight. And from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. second down this secondary as a unit they've worked really well together in this one especially late a lot of cohesiveness a lot of communication and some great athleticism they're playing so well now a nickname is sure to follow they're going to have to name this whole unit soon an incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25 He's back to throw. Over the middle complete. It's Mack. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. They'll look to throw. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. He'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Mike Bennett in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Back to throw. Complete to Hilton. And he'll get it down here to the 43. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout.
time. The Colts on third down. A pretty anemic, a very anemic one for nine thus far. This is third and 11. Luck. And this is going to be incomplete. He's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Desperation time for Luck on fourth down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Doyle. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Eagles are likely going to win it. Well, certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on fourth. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. The Eagles in the victory formation as they take an E. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The Eagles in the victory formation as they take an E. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Were you one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because you know open-air booth. That rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gawden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Eagles are winners here as we say so long from Philadelphia.